Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at another Bitwig video. We're going to be checking out drum programming or setting up drum machines inside of Bitwig, specifically the Bitwig drum machine, which is actually a really cool little device that you can do quite a lot with. Now there's a lot of different ways that you can work with drums in Bitwig. Of course, you can just drop stuff into audio events, which is pretty simple. You can just use the standard sampler. But I want to take a look at the drum machine itself uh, because there is quite a lot of scope for workflow enhancement and stuff when it comes to using this. So let's get going. We're going to start off with a blank project here. I'm just going to bring in a channel and browse for my, my drum machine device and we'll load one up there. Now the first thing to remember is that the drum machine device is essentially just a container very much like any of the other stuff like the effects layers or instrument layers or groups or whatever which means that it pretty much conforms to all of the modularity that comes with Bitwig and what makes Bitwig so cool. Uh, so that meaning for instance if we uh, by default if you sorry if you double click here it's going to ask you to load up a, a sample. Uh, which is not what I want to do in this case. You do need to load a sample first to enable that pad. And that will now be available there for me. Uh, what you can do is you can actually remove this sampler and then insert a new device here. So you can actually load up the e-snare, for example, which is, of course, a Bitwig device. Um, you could load up group devices here. This could be any VST plugin that you want. Essentially, uh, we could just bring in an instance of Diva, for example. And with Diva, say we have a percussive sound here. Diva is probably overkill for a drum pad. But nevertheless, you can load that up on a pad and you can have multiple instances of Diva running on different pad sounds here as well. So let's get rid of Diva for a sec. Uh, like I said, you can bring in grouped instruments as well. So what this means is you can also very easily group and layer uh, samples as well. So let's say, for instance, we want to take a let's take some snare sounds. We'll grab an 808. Let's just blend a few of these together. Um, we'll grab a couple of these. And when you bring in multiple samples like this, you'll see you can click and drag all of these down to the drum so drum machine. Uh, by default, it's going to lay them up lay them up sequentially on the different pads. Uh, but if you hold down the shift key, you'll see that you now have the ability to layer these. So when you drop them on one pad now, you are using all of them at the same time. And what we can do now is we can very easily create sort of more stereo sounding snares, for example. Uh, we could filter these if we want. Let's just, for instance, just take something a little bit more simple. We'll keep that's got a nice sort of like little thwack to it. We can take something a little bit more noisy then. Let's take that one, put it in as a layer. And whenever you bring in something new like this, you often need to just reset the root key, C1. There we go. And now we can easily filter these as well. So we can go and stick in effects after these. If we open up the effects section for this, we could bring in an EQ2, for example. Maybe just filter the top one. Copy this one, bring that in, and drop this guy just afterwards. Maybe just uh, Reverse the CQ here, we'll do a low pass on this one and turn this guy off. So you've got some nice layering going on there and there's a lot that you can do with that as well. And then of course you could have global effects on those. So you've got the EQs on those and then you could also put a global effect here. Let's say we want to do a bit of compression for example. Compress this globally as well on that pad. Now the next thing I want to look at is uh, a way to just kind of speed up the workflow when you're working with drum uh, libraries or, or setting up sort of custom drum kits for yourself that make it really quick and easy to get the sounds that you want. There's a couple of ways to organize your drum sounds and stuff in Bitwig. Uh, one's by using um, custom collections and you can favorite your drum sounds and add them to a collection. But another way is to actually set up your own custom drum kits. And I'm going to show you how you can do this and bring in a ton of sounds at the same time. So you can kind of just flick through different options while you are programming your beats. So 
initially what I used to do in something like Groove Agent when I was working in Cubase was I would bring in, let's get our kicks first, so we'll grab um, electronic kicks, we'll go to, just grab these punchy ones here, and I can kind of go through these fine kicks that I'd like, take a few of these. And what I used to do is just drag them in and then I'd have a drum machine that has a whole bunch of kicks in it and I'd save that as a kick preset. So then when I'm working on a track, let's just get a kick loop going here. We'll just go up to 124 and let's just do a macro. So we've got a kick loop in there now. And we'll just bounce back to the beginning, turn on our loop. So what you could do here, uh, I'm just using the machine controller now, is while you're busy running your track, if you want to try and find the right kick, you've got your loop there, you can play this back, and then just use these semitones to kind of feel your way through all the kicks that you have in your library until you find the right one. And it's just a great way to kind of audition what you're doing. Uh, sometimes a kick works better with uh, a different track and different sounds. Um, so you want to just find the right kick like that. But the problem that you have with this now, and let's say, for instance, if I do a little bit of work here and I go and add an EQ or something to this, and we do a little bit of EQing here, and obviously the EQ is going to be pretty different for each kick as well. But let's say there's some processing here that I do want to keep. And additionally, I make some changes to the filter on or the uh, amp envelope, for example. So great. But what happens now is if I want to change my kick sound, and we come up to this one. Now my amp envelope has been reset and none of my processing is available on this sampler pad that we have here now. So there's a way that you can get around this, and it's a really nifty little uh, feature in the multi-sampling settings for the sampler that goes inside of these pads here. We'll just remove these now again, and actually let's just remove everything except for that first kick. There we go. So this is going to be our kick pad. We can rename this pad as kick. So now we've got a kick pad there. And what we're going to do is we're going to come over to the sampler here and we're going to right click this and say convert to multi sample. So that's going to enable this sampler for multi sampling now. Now just double click here and this will open up the multi sample editor full screen for you. You see we've got our sample here, which is currently loaded. And we want to bring in some more kicks now. So let's just take these selections that we had here. And we don't need the first one. But let's just bring a whole bunch of these kicks in. See, we ch chosen our favorites there. And we're just going to drop them just underneath. So now we've got a whole bunch of kicks on one pad there. You can hear one of the problems is that the uh, root keys are not set now either. While we have all of those selected here, we could just go to this one here, and the pad is C1, so we just do that, and it will resample all of them. But you see what it's doing now is it's layering all of them on top of each other. Uh, what I'm going to do now is select all of our multi sample, all of our samples in our multi sample patch here, and right click on them, and you have some options here to distribute keys. So you can distrib distribute the key equally, which is going to set them along keys. That's great for multi sampling instruments. Uh, distribute velocity equally. That is great for if you're doing um, multiple samples for one drum pad, which you may want to be velocity sensitive, for example. You could also do round robins. If you've got a couple of tiny variations between hat sounds or something like that, you can set those to a round robin over here. Actually, we can do that right now. If we select round robin with this. Yeah, it's randomly selecting a different sample every time a note plays. 
Uh, but that's not what we're looking for. We want to go and right click and say distribute select equally. And what this is going to do is it's only going to play a sample pertaining to the number that is here. You'll see if you click on one of these samples, you have a, a select amount uh, parameter here. So this kick that we have here is now, because we've set it to do, to do this automatically, it is a select value of 0 to 5. Once you pass a num number 5 on this, it's going to select an, a new kick. Uh, and you can do this manually, but there's kind of no point. You want to just be able to sweep through these kicks using the select dial. And now when we play this back, we've got that first kick, but let's choose another one. So that is fantastic, because now what we can do is when we start programming our drum sounds, we have our kick loop here. All we have to do to audition our kicks now is just use this dial. Say so I like that kick, we can change the envelopes here, make that kick a little bit shorter. And those settings now apply to all of the kicks inside because they're all contained within the same sampler device inside of the drum machine, which is a really, really nice way to build presets for yourself. You can build sort of quite large libraries of sounds and just be able to select stuff within this. Uh, let's just quickly, I'll show you again. We can do this really quickly with some clap sounds as well. We'll just take a whole bunch of... Uh, Claps and snaps. Let's just go to an 808 clap. We'll bring one of those in. Quickly just set this to multi sample. Double click here. Bring in a 909, maybe. Some, something slightly different. We'll bring in some of these synthetic claps. And maybe some snaps too. There you go. You've got a nice selection of different claps to use now. Once again, just uh, select all of these, distribute, select equally, and just make sure that they are all in the right key, which would be C sharp one. So now if we want to program in some claps, we can do that. We'll just uh, enable overwrite here. And now to choose our clap. So I like that one. And there we go. So all you need to do now is just go and name your drum machine, whatever, and save that to your preset library. Uh, you can add that to a collection if you want as well. It's just a really quick way to get into programming your drums with all the sounds that you really like. Now, another little thing I wanted to show you as well is not only can you save out all of that, you can also save out all the effects presets and stuff as well. So um, on this pad, one thing that I typically like to dial in a little bit is uh, Sony Oxford's Inflator. It's just a really nice way to kind of bring your kick out slightly. You can save all of this within the preset as well. And if you'd like to take that a bit further as well, you could probably just uh, make some custom macros for some of these sample pads as well. Uh, you could even do that at the drum machine level here. If we do this, we can add macros or uh, custom devices uh, or device controls. You just click up here, you can do a performance control and let's say we want to use the select so we can call this kick select and let's also add in one for the amount of effect on our inflator for example now we need to do the performance one so now without even having to open up the pads we could just have this removed entirely and we've got control from here yeah, over our samples and certain effects and you can have multiple pages of these set up so just really quick and easy to get to what you need to 
And then lastly, the last little thing that I want to look at is uh, really no, another nice little feature that's built into the drum machines. It's kind of hidden away as well. So you may or may not know about this, um, but it actually has its own internal send uh, structure built into the drum machine as well. So not only can you set up insert effects on each pad like this, you can actually save out full sends uh, as well in a preset, all contained within the drum machine and not accessible by other parts of your track. You, you don't have to set up additional sends in the mix. And to do that, all you need to do is come down here and enable this sends section down here. You'll see this opens up the returns dialog on the side. And we can then go and add in a convolution, for example. So with the new convolution reverb in uh, 4.3, oh, and we want this to be in the return section. So just put the convolution in there. So you can hear there's no reverb being applied now. But if we open up our mixer, you'll see you've got a single channel for the drum machine. You can come and click on this little guy over here. And then it'll expand all the pads in the drum machine uh, on the mixer for you. So it's sort of tab just like a group is normally in Bootwig. And you'll notice that you've got this convo send in here. So the FX1, you'll notice, is down here. So you still have access on the mixer to your global sends as well. But you have this convolution reverb, which you can enable now, specifically for the drum machine. So maybe not on the kick, but let's uh, just select this here. So we want to add some reverb onto our clap. We can send to that. And uh, from here again, let's just quickly tweak that. We can maybe, we want that to be full uh, mix. And just maybe just bring down the decays on this slightly. We may actually want a different... And there's your reverb. Uh, you can also access that just by clicking on the pad and you'll see down at the bottom here, you've got your reverb send on the left-hand side. And then on top of this, you don't have to uh, just have the reverb there. You can actually add a chain to this too. So let's say for instance, we wanted to add in some EQ, we can roll off the bottom end. We can even do things like uh, add some distortion to the reverb. And there you have it. That's a couple of really cool tricks uh, to use in the Bitwig drum machine. I'm using this a lot at the moment. I've, uh, when I was, I'm using this a lot at the moment. I'm really enjoying it. When I, you know, when I used to work in Cubase as well, uh, the drum machine was really just sort of a menu that I'd use to bounce stuff down afterwards. And I did all the drums inside of the arrangement pages, audio a lot of the time, or as a sampler track. But I'm finding this super intuitive to use, and it's just a really quick, nice, easy way to get your favorites all out into your track really, really quickly. And then, of course, if you do want to separate these at any given time, you can just, uh, you know, remove some of these Yeah. And then, of course, in Bitwig, it's super easy to get this into audio. You can just uh, hold down Alt when you're dragging this, and there you go. So now you've got just your claps separated, you could drop those down and then grab your kicks as well. And there you go. It's cool. So I hope that helps and uh, gives you some ideas on how to use the Bitwig drum machine. I will catch you guys again soon right here on the channel. Uh, if you want to support the channel a little bit more, go and check out the Patreon page. Uh, I will leave the link in the comments for you and uh, there's a bunch of presets you can go and grab them. I'm, I'm uploading content there all the time uh, so you can go check that out. There's a number of uh, little mini banks up there ready for Dune, uh, Obsession, Jupiter 8V, uh, Zebra, Diva, Reaper, a whole bunch of stuff there. So go and check that out and uh, cool. I'll see you guys soon right here at Marula Music. Cheers.